Hi, and welcome to uh, section 2.8 for Math 181. I actually misspoke at the end of the last videos for 2.6. I said that was the end of chapter 2. Clearly it's now. We have this one last section to do. In section 2.8, we're going to be looking at linear approximations and differentials. So let's take a look at the following picture. Let's say I have my function f of x is x squared, which gives me what? A parabola, right? So if I pick some spot on this parabola and I was to draw the tangent line, If I was to take a camera and zoom in as much as I could onto that spot, I would get what? I would get the edge of the curve, and then I would get the tangent line to that curve. And so the closer that we zoomed in on that point, the even the curvature of the curve plus that straight line are what? They're almost going to be the same. So that's what we're doing in this section is we're taking some function, could be a complicated function, and just converting it into a line at that point, which is a lot easier to approx or um, figure out a value of a line instead of some complicated function. So if I can find the equation of the tangent line, then that gives me a linear approximation of that equation. So even though my equation might be y equals x squared, at that point if I have that tangent line, that little piece is basically giving me the same value or a very good approximation at that point. But we know how to do that, right? We know how to find the equation of a tangent line. So let's say that we're given let's say that we're given some point A and so we can find the function value at that point A. Well this is what we could call this our x1 and call this our y1 because why? In order to find the equation of that tangent line what do we need? We need the slope which is what the derivative and then the x1 and the y1 values. So if I was to rewrite my point slope formula with all that information, I get what? I get y minus y1, which is f of a, is equal to m, the slope, which is what? Well, that's f prime at that point a, and then x minus x1, which is just that value a. So if I bring the f of a over to this side, I get what? I get y, or we can call it f of x, is equal to, so I'm adding f of a to both sides. So I get f of x is equal to f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a. And that's essentially giving me a line, right? Using point slope formula, the slope of the tangent line at that point. And this is what we call the linear approximation of f at some point a. And so we have what's also known as the linearization. And we're just going to change this f of x to l of x. So this is indicating to us that my linear approximation, my linearization of the function is the same thing. f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a. And again, this is known as the linearization. So it could be asking a couple different ways. It could say what's the linear approximation or what's the linearization. It's the same idea. f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a. 
So let's look at an example of how this works. <coughs> So let's say we have the following example. We want to find the linearization of the function f of x is equal to the square root of x plus 3 at the point a equals 1. And then once we have that, once we have a linear approximation of this function at my point A equals 1, I want to estimate the square root of 3.98 and the square root of 4.05. So we're doing this why? Well, back in the day when we didn't have calculators to figure out square roots, there had to be another way to do it. And this is how we could do it. We'll see at the end, it's just a matter of some division and addition that will lead us to estimate what these square root values are. So first off, we need the linearization, we need to come up with a line that approximates this same function, the square root of x plus 3. So we have a so solution. My f of x is what? It's the square root of x plus 3, which is the same as what? x plus 3 to the 1 half. So if I take the derivative of this, bring down the half, Rewrite what's inside. Because it's x plus 3, the derivative of x is just 1. So if I was going to be applying the chain rule, I'm still just multiplying by 1. So I don't need to do any more there. But then to the minus 1 half, which means this is what? This is 1 over 2, the square root of x plus 3. So that's my derivative of my function f of x. Now we're at the point a is equal to 1. So f of 1, I'm just going to plug that in. So 1 plus 3 is 4. So f of 1 is square root of 1 plus 3, which is square root of 4, which we know to be 2. I also need f prime of 1. So that's what? That's 1 over 2 times square root of 1 plus 3, which is 1 over 2 times the square root of 4 which is 1 over 2 times 2, which is 1 fourth. So now that I have that, my linearization, my L of X, my approximation is what? Well, I erased this either. So it's F of A, which is F of 1, which is 2, plus F prime of A, so 1 fourth times X minus A, or again, we're using 1 as our value for A. So simplify this, this is what? 2 plus x over 4, or 1 fourth x, just simplifying it, minus 1 fourth. So 8, I'm sorry, 2 is like 8 over 4. So 8 minus 1 is 7. So we have 7 fourths plus x over 4. So what I'm saying is, is that when a is equal to 1, at the point on the curve where a is 1, my linear approximation of this function is the same as 7 fourths plus x over 4. So now, the next part, so that's my linear approximation. That's the first part we want. Now we want to estimate these two values. So I want to estimate square root of 3.98. So how is this related to my function? Well, this is what? This is the square root of 3 plus 0 0.98. And my function is what? x plus 3. So actually, let me rewrite this just to make it clear. So 3.98 is like 0 0.98 plus 3. So that means that if my f of x is square root of x plus 3, this 0 0.98 is my value for x. So to approximate this in this linear approximation, I'm just going to plug in 0.98 in for x 
So that's 7 fourths plus 0 0.98 divided by 4. And when you calculate these numbers, it's approximately 1.995. <coughs> So without using a calculator, unless maybe the division, but I don't have to have a calculator with a square root, right? I can just plug in my value for x, simplify, and it tells me that the square root of 3.98 is roughly 1.95. Same idea here for square root of 4.05. So that's the same as square root of 1.05 plus 3. So now the value I'm plugging in for x is 1.05. So same idea, 7 fourths plus 1.05 divided by 4. And this is approximately 2.0125. So that's it for this problem. My linear approximation, 7 fourths plus x over 4. The estimate for square root of 3.98 is 1.95. And the square root for 4.05 is approximately 2.0125. So let's continue this example. So that's our linear approximation. But ultimately, the approximation is not very good if it doesn't give us that good of results as our approximations, right? So if we continue this example, and I want to know, well, how good is the approximation? So I can use that using the following formula. So I'm going to take the absolute value. So you're going to use this a lot like in your sciences, chemistry, maybe physics. Uh, if you want approximations and you want to know like what's the relative errors a lot of time you'll hear. We do what? We take the absolute value of what the function, the true value should have been, minus what our approximation was, divided by what it should have been. This will give us a decimal value, or should. And if we want to know in terms of percentage, like how, how close percentage-wise is it, then we would multiply this by 100. So for example, for our square root of 3.98, if I want to know how good of an approximation is 1.995 to the true value, well, it'd be what? So now I wouldn't need my calculator. If I plug in 3.98, hit square root, that's going to give me 1.994993, and it keeps going. And you can see if we were to round this, it's what? It's 1.995, which are about the same. So it's almost the exact value. But if we minus the linear approximation, 1.995, divided by 1.994993, and then times this by 100, this is going to give us, once you calculate all this, take the absolute value, multiply by 100, this is approximately 0.0004%. So it, as, as we could see just from the rounding, it's basically the same thing, right? And that tells us how good of an approximation uh, it would be. Now, what if we want to know how good or how much, how, how, for how many values of x can I actually use this approximation? Because that's what? That's when a was 1 on the curve, on our f of x is square root of x plus 3. But what if I want to say, well, what if a is 10? Is that good enough? Or what if a is 0? Is that, well, maybe not 0, 1. Is that good enough? How, what values can I choose so that it's going to give me a good estimate? So again, if we continue this example, if I want to know what values of x I'm going to switch markers here so in case it's starting to fade out on the board here. So what values of x is the square root of x plus 3 approximately 
or a good approximation is the 7 fourths plus x over 4. So for what values of this, is this a good approximation within a half, 0 0.5? So we saw that for like square root of 3.98, it was essentially the, th it's the same value. But what values can I choose for x so that the estimation it gives me is within 0 0.5? So we would do what? Well, we have to have that the absolute value of this, plus or minus, the actual function minus this approximation is less than or equal to 0 0.5. So it could be either 0.5 above, 0.5 below. That's why we say uh, the absolute value. So if we were to solve this, to get rid of the absolute values, or to get rid of the absolute value sign, we do what? We have positive 0 0.5 on that side, but also minus 0.5 on the left. So again, it could be as much as 0.5 above, but it could also be 0.5 below that actual value, and it's still within 0.5. I'm not going to go through the math here, but if we move all the pieces around, square things, solve for x, etc., etc., we're eventually going to get down to x is between negative 2.6 and positive 8.6. So what that means is I can I could choose x is equal to 7, it falls within here, plug that into here. So square root of 7 plus 3, so square root of 10, is within 0 0.05 by using this x estimation. So 7 fourths plus 10, uh, what did I say? Uh, 7. 7 divided by 4. So 7 fourths plus 7 fourths is a good approximation of the square root of 10. And as long as my value of x falls between this range, that's going to hold true. So that's the end of the first video. This is the first of two videos. I don't think I mentioned that at the start. But it's looking at what is linear approximation, how do we figure out that approximation, and then how can we apply it to an actual function, and how good of an estimate is it, and what range is it actually good for. So come on back, uh, video two. Uh, we're going to look at differentials, the second topic in section 2.8, and then that will wrap up chapter two.